So it is great to be here again, and it's great to have uh, even some newcomers. Some people have come from as far away as Donegal, the independent republic. And um, so you're very, very welcome. It's good to have you here. Well done for making the long trip down. Um, I was thinking today about our, our readings, and what really struck me about today's readings is this, just this one line from the Psalms, right? It was the, the, the response to the Psalm. I have God for my help. I have God for my help. If you keep saying that, it's like what we were, remember when we were doing Lexio yesterday. Like you keep saying, I have God for my help. I, have, I, find, I find that when I keep saying it, my, my chest kind of inflates. I was like, I have God for my help. I have God, I have God for my help. It's kind of, it kind of, it gives you something that we might, we might not be used to having as Catholics, right? And that is confidence. Conf I have God for my help. And remember, I see, it's very, very, the, 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 the details, the, the, the the balance in this thing is always so, so important. You know what I mean? I, it's the, my help is God. So I'm not counting on myself. It's not that, oh, bless, I'm amazing. But it's, I have God for my help. So we're right to be confident. We just have to be careful that we're sure where that confidence comes from. The confidence isn't self-confidence. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's good to have um, a, uh, uh, the necessary amount of self-esteem, absolutely. But to go through life saying, I've got this, you know, and just be entirely self-reliant. No, you don't got nothing. That's awful English. No, you don't have anything, right? You don't, you don't have it. You don't, you don't. So it's good to be, to be confident, but to know where that confidence comes from, okay? To have uh, I say a sufficient amount of self-esteem that uh, the self-deprecation is, is, is awful, but to be confident in oneself, but knowing that the source of everything good is, is the Lord. And then you can kind of walk through life a wee bit more balanced, confident, but not, not that you're so amazing, but confident in God. Um, I had a friend in secondary school who shall remain nameless. We will call him Tony. And Tony, when he, we were in first, second, and third year, Tony, Tony used to throw his weight around something serious, right? He wasn't the biggest chap at all, about ye, ye at all. Uh, but he'd push his weight around. Why? Because he knew that his older cousin, Bonnie Kendi was in fifth year. Bonnie Kendi might have done fifth year about four or five times, I think, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so through the whole of his early life, we, we, ended up, we might have ended up in the same year in the end, I don't know. Uh, but Bonnie Kendi, you see, if, 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 if Tony ever put a foot out of line now with, with some of the bigger boys in first, second or third year, right, Bonnie Kendi was right behind him. Why are you doing, why are you saying to Tony? Nothing. <laughs> And that was it. And so Tony could be so confident because Bonnie had his back. Now, if we see that in a kind of a positive way, <laughs> without throwing our weight around, to have that confidence that God has my back. When we walk into a chapel, or a church as we call them down here, when we walk into a church and the Blessed Sacrament is exposed, do we really believe that as such from the Blessed Sacrament, the Lord is looking at us and that he looks you in the eye and he knows you and he can look you in the eye and stay looking you in the eye constantly, all of you simultaneously and that he knows your heart and that he knows your wounds and that he knows your past and he knows what you're capable of and he knows where you've been and he knows where he can bring you our first reading, not long ago, you were foreigners and enemies. Now that's foreigners and enemies of God, okay? In the way that you used to think and the evil things that you did. Okay, so the Lord knows you, he sees you, you've made mistakes. But the story doesn't end there. But now, God has reconciled you. So reunited you again to him. How? By Christ's death in his mortal body. Jesus died for you. And so now, how, now how, does he, how does he, how does St. Paul go on? How does he continue? Now you are able to appear before him holy, pure, and blameless. Do you see how that works? Like The Lord knows that you, you've made mistakes. You have a past. Okay, but we're not staying stuck there. He knows your heart. But then through Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, the Lord can now look at you and see you as 
holy, pure, and blameless. But it's not the kind of, he looks at you and says, I, you know, I mean, we've kind of cleaned you up a bit, but I know what you did last summer. It's not that. It's it, it, like the past is gone, forgotten, and healed, and now you appear before him holy. Holy. Not just kind of patched up, but holy and pure and blameless. Like, it's such a simple line that you just probably just heard it, it was in one ear and out the other. Like, the, the profundity of that statement is just absolutely incredible. So we can be so confident in God, not in ourselves, but confident in his mercy. We can be so confident that there's always actually a way back, no matter how far we've fallen. If I want the Lord, if I want his healing, if I want his forgiveness, it is available to me. And so when I come to him, he, he, he knows me. He knows me. But no matter how far I've fallen, there's always a way back if I want it. The issue is never does God want me back, because he does. That's what, the whole, that's what the cross was about. So willing was he to, to win us back that he dies on a cross. So the question isn't, would God have me back? The question is, do, do I want to go back? Do I want to go back home? And that question is, it's, 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 it's left before us. Do you want to go home? And it's, it's up to us to answer. And no one can answer for us. St. Paul writes uh, in Romans chapter 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Persecution, or hunger, or anguish, or trials, or lack of clothing, or dangers, or the sword? As scripture says, for your sake we are being killed all day long. They treat us like sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all of this, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Remember where our confidence comes from? We are more than conquerors, but again, not through the fact that we work out all the time and have particularly impressive biceps. We're, our confidence comes from the fact that through him who loved us. I am certain that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor spiritual powers, nor present, nor past, nor future, nor cosmic powers, neither the world above, nor the world below, nor any creature whatsoever will be able to separate us from the love of God which we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Like that, to have that confidence, like nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. And to, 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 to live in that confidence, that, and that this is never a license to sin, we know that, but just, just, to, just so that it's said, okay? It's, it's never said, well, I can do what I want, and at the end of the day, we're all grand, like God will forgive me, he's kind of harmless. No, no, no. We have a responsibility. And our lives affect others. So the way I live, the way I, what I choose to do with my time, it affects others, so I'm responsible for that. But if my heart is open and I want God, nothing can separate me from him and him from me. Nothing. Not death, nor life. Angels, powers, the sword, persecution, nothing. This is what you see like in, in the martyrs, you know, how they were actually willing to lose everything, even their lives. But for the reward of, of gaining everything. In fact, they already had everything. They had everything. I, I, I have God. I have that faith, that absolute confidence that even if they take my life from me, I gain heaven. So you can't actually take anything from me. All you do is just kind of speed up my entrance to heaven. So bring it on. <laughs> you know, but like, you, like I, you, you can't take anything from me. What, my love for God, you can't take my love for God from me. You can't. And like that like, confidence, my goodness, I, whenever I read the stories of martyrs, I always feel so, so small and so useless, <laughs> you know, when you read their, 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 their courage, that like, you know, like imagine like being in persecuted China or, 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 or Russia during communism, like in any day, any of your neighbors could have betrayed that there was a priest in your house or a priest passed through or they saw you going into the forest there with some other people, wonder what was happening there for some clandestine mass. And anybody, anybody at any moment could betray you. 
and then you're just, you just disappear. You're arrested one day and you end up off in some concentration camp. No records, no nothing. Your family don't even know where you are. Are you alive or dead? Will you come back? No one knows. Just imagine, like, and they, 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 just, they did it anyway. Even our own ancestors here. Just, it's just like the, the courage they had. Phenomenal. And here's us like, oh, do I have to get up for Mass at 8 o'clock? <laughs> so hard, <laughs> you know? Might be kind of, I might, my, 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 my feet might hit the cold floor. It's, un, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> what wusses we are, <laughs> genie. But to have that confidence, that confidence in God, that once I have him, I lack nothing. And even if I fall along the way, if I want his mercy, it's available to me. And then to walk through life with that freedom. With that freedom, every day is a gift. There's a, a focus missionary, a focus or it's FOCUS, Fellowship of Catholic University Students. They started in the States about 20, over a little over 20 years ago, uh, where they minister to college students. So it's college students minister, ministering to college students. Um, <laughs> briefly, um, their idea is that if college students who have the faith minister to other college students, right, it's going to be a little, it's going to be more effective, okay, because they kind of speak their language, they understand what Facebook is and Instagram, which apparently has kind of replaced Facebook for young people, try and keep up, it's not easy. Okay, uh, anyway, they know, how, they know how the culture works. But their approach was, as a mission team, and each person on the mission team, there's three kind of pillars to their missionary life. One is what they call divine intimacy. That I, as a focused missionary, if I'm going to do anything good, it must come from God. So if I don't have a relationship with God, I can't give a relationship with God. So my first responsibility as a focused missionary is that I live divine intimacy. And that word for us as Irish people and as Irish men is really uncomfortable. In intimacy. <laughs> it's, it's all kind of awkward, right? But divine intimacy, to have a kind of a, a profound, intimate relationship with God. So not just I believe, remember, believing God exists doesn't mean jack unless it changes your life. It has no, believing God exists has no effect on your life unless you start to actually change your habits or your prayer life, what you do with your time. Belief in God doesn't change anything. So don't be patting ourselves on the back because we believe in God. So what? Whoopie do. Right? There are people who believe in the tooth fairy and other things. Right? So what? <laughs> so what? Like, if, 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 if we want our belief in God to actually change something, now that's, that's very, very different. But then that's a relationship. That's a relationship. Okay, divine intimacy. Secondly, then they aim to share their faith, not with the whole college campus, but with two or three. You might be in a college campus of 17,000, right? And here you are, little Johnny, 19 years of age, you've, you've done your, your, your focus missionary volunteer, volunteering there for one year, and your job out of those 17,000 is to invest in three people, but with sincere friendship. That's the second principle, like sincere friendship. You get to know people. You get to know their family, their hurts, their wounds, their past, their, all that kind of thing. You get to know them. And then you invite them to, often Bible study is, is, is usually the, the focus approach. So what does the Lord say? What's, what does the word of God say to us today? Okay? And then the third principle, which is, I think is epic, right, is that those you minister to, you equip them to minister to others, right? Again, something that we as Catholics, we're not really good at. For generations, see, we haven't needed to, to pass on, kind of minister, kind of win people back in, because everyone was just on the Catholic conveyor belt. Everyone just kind of ended up at Mass. How do we end up here? <laughs> and, you know, everyone just kind, of, we just kind of ended up in the church. But then, kind of mid-90s, uh, turn of the millennium, people started saying, well, actually, why am I on this conveyor belt? And they kind of step off, and then conveyor belt just goes on and they realize actually look here I am not going to mass and haven't been struck by lightning yet it's grand I'm grand without it okay so we kind of lost this this understanding that everyone in the church lay people especially are called to win people back into the church we're all called to be fishers of men to some degree okay so to equip those who come to their, their bible studies to invite others 
to give them the confidence to win others back to the church. That's very so simple. They started with 20 students 22 years ago uh, in Benedictine College, wherever that is, can't remember. Don't know. Uh, in the States, okay. Uh, and I was at one of their focus retreats there two years ago, just before COVID hit. And there were 17,000 university age students. So no one over the age of 30 at it. 17,000 from all around the States. And when I went there, my, I think my jaw was dragging on the floor for about 20 minutes. It was all, like, just, I mean, like the hardest age group to, to win to the faith are university students. Like that's, that's when everything really goes off the rails. Like. But they're, they're everyone, just normal kids having fun and playing a bit of American football uh, out in the car park during the breaks and things. Just normal kids. Then the best second came out, boom, all dropped to their knees. Like, I thought, this, this actually can be done. You know, it had me increase my confidence in God that like this, this works. Our faith is actually enough. If if they're presented the truth, if our young people are, they will actually if they're presented the truth with conviction. They too can experience that I have God for my help. And then they may have messed up. And then you know, I say back to Colossians, our reading. They may have been foreigners and enemies of God. But then they discover like that through confession and the reality, the truth of God's mercy, that they can stand before him holy, pure, and blameless. So I have great hope, but not in me, not in structures and systems, but in God and what he's going to do in the church and through the church, and in you and through you. So we can march on as Catholics today, 2021, confident confident in God that nothing will come between us and him nothing and the renewal of the church he has a plan it's underway already but we leave that to him in his time and then there we are free and joyful sons and daughters of God that's our calling that's, that's what I hope this retreat helps you to discover this weekend that we don't, have to, we don't have to solve the world's problems because we can't. I can't. Can you? Maybe you can. Um, I can't. <laughs> but God can. So we trust him. Knowing that our eternal, loving Father has our back. Amen. Amen.